and hi everybody. Hey, I'm excited about today's story because it's the middle of winter and I've been wearing mittens, just like the book is called The Mitten. And I've, I always love to get out my mittens in the winter time because I got some cool ones. One of my favorite ones has a snowman on it. <laughs> I love that one. And one of my other favorite ones, just to keep my hands warm, I bet you guys have some of your favorite mittens. And then I've got some, which I can't get my hand in, with people, people on it. Check it out. I got snowmen and all to keep my hands warm. And then I have another, I got to show you my recent favorite mittens. Let's see. Oh, they have a picture of Michigan on it. So if somebody asks you where you live when you're when you're out walking around, you can show them the Upper Peninsula and the Lower Peninsula right on your mittens. So I, I just love different kinds of mittens to keep my hands warm. And the story is about a little boy whose grandmother knitted him a pair of snow white mittens. And just basically what happened was he lost one and a whole bunch of animals decided to try to keep warm. Just like I'm keeping my hands warm in my Michigan mittens. Some animals decided to try to crawl in his lost mitten all at the same time. Look at that, a bear, I think an owl. I've got all of these guys here. Um, a fox, oh my goodness, a badger <laughs> and a hedgehog, wow. And Oh, let's see, a mouse and a rabbit. All of those tried to fit inside one little tiny mitten. Oh my goodness. It snows a lot in the wintertime. I got a window out here to the side and I can see tons and tons of white, white snow out there. And the little boy wanted a white mitten. A white mitten. What do you think would happen if you dropped a white mitten in the snow? Would you be able to see it? Wow. Have you heard of the word camouflage before? I bet you have. That's when something blends in with their surroundings. And a lot of animals do it. A lot of animals have, <laughs> have um, camouflage. So we're going to play a little game before the story. And it's the camouflage game. So what I'm going to do is change the camera to the tabletop. So take a look at my game. It's a piece of paper with a lot, it looks like almost a pink and orange leopard. What do you think? Do you think it looks like a pink and orange leopard? Yeah, and then I know that you're seeing some shapes too of some different animals. So let's see how many animals that we can find on my leopard, pink and orange leopard paper. Well, the one that I see first is a lot lighter than its surroundings and that's a what? A uh, shark, woohoo! So I'm gonna put that one aside. So that's one with me, one shark. Oh, you know what? I think I see another shark. But it blends in a little bit more because it's a little, it's still pink and orange, but it's darker, it's lighter. Oh, another shark. That's two animals. And I see, I think I see a snake. What is this, a snake? Yep, all of these animals are blending in this, with their surroundings. Oh, it's not quite the same pattern as the pink and orange leopard, but it's the same colors and I have snakes. So that's three, right? Oh, here's an easy one. I bet you spotted the butterfly right away. Yeah, here it is. That's, this is animal number four, the butterfly. Now it's got some pink in it, like, like the background, but it's kind of a solid color. So I can see that right away. So that's animal number four. Okay, oh, I see another animal like that. It's pink, but it's a solid color and it's bl not blending in. What do I got? <gasps> a turtle! <laughs> so I'm gonna put that animal up. So that's five animals that I got out of here. Now, doesn't it look like I don't have any more animals on my piece of paper? Let's see how many more we can find. Well, I kind of see a wrinkle right here. So I'm gonna pick up the wrinkle and see what animal that was. Oh my goodness, now that I moved it, can you see a bug? <laughs> yep, 
<laughs> there's a bug. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We got rid of the easy ones and now the harder ones. So we have five animals. Let's see what happens when I, I see another little wrinkle. Um, where did that go? Right here. See another little wrinkle. Oh, what have I got? A uh, turtle. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's six. Oh, here's one. Oh, did you see that one? Seven. That one's a frog, I think. Yeah. Seven. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, they're all blend in. Camouflage so much. Oh, did you see that one when it was down there? I didn't. Here's number eight. It's a deer. <laughs> see, it doesn't blend in with my hand, but when I put it down here, it's camouflaged. I can barely see it. So how many was that? Was that seven? <gasps> oh, something moved. Something wiggled. Eight. It's a snake. <laughs> Another snake. Let's see. Okay. What else is going to... Oh, no. I have to wait till they wiggle. Oh, it wiggles. It wiggles. It wiggles. It wiggles. I found... A shark. There's nine. <laughs> okay, here's one. Oh, it wiggled again too. Can you see it when it wiggles? You can see it when it moves. So animals that are trying to stay camouflaged, they're gonna stay really still because when they move, you can kind of see them. That's 10. Another butterfly. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think there's one more. Let's see if I can find it by moving my feet. Oh, I did, I found it. Do you see it is? Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. And the last one is a duck. <laughs> I think I can make my light shark disappear too. Look at that. Oh, there's that shark. He starts, he's a little easier to see. But there we go, woo, shark. So that's camouflage, animals that blend in with their surroundings. So to the, in today's story, we had a mitten that the little boy lost. And it was going to blend in with the snow and some of the animals are going to find it. Let's start the story now. Here we go. The Mitten, written and illustrated by Jan Brett. And so let's turn the page and get started here. Let's see how many animals can fit into the Mitten. Oh, there's the little boy looking out the window. And there he is walking out the door over here. Okay. Wow. Once there was a little boy named Nikki who wanted his new wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as the snow. Look at how white that snow is. Yeah. Yep, it is definitely white. So take a look at the illustrations. I see a whole bunch of and I have a little mouse here. Mouse is looking at the snow and how white it is. Oh, and behind that tree, I think that's where, that's where the cabin was. And he's playing in the snow. Wouldn't it be fun to jump and stuff into a big snow pile? Oh, I'd love to do that. I wonder who this is over here. <gasps> that's probably his grandma or his bubba. What's she doing? Looks like she might be looking for some Yarn as white as snow. Mouse is going to help me turn some pages here. Do, 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 do. Yep. Oh, oh, yep. At first, his grandma Bubba didn't want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. And now we know why because of camouflage, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so there's that white snow, and there she is working hard, knitting the mittens out of white. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally Bubba made them. Mittens, mittens, mittens. Mousy doesn't have any mittens. Oh, it's so cold for my paws. All right, he's gonna help me turn the pages up. Okay, there we go. Oh, what happens next? After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you're safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have both of your snow white mittens. Oh, you better not lose them. No. Okay, so off Nikki went, 
And it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Oh, no. Can you see it? Let's see if we can find it. Okay, remember how we were looking for animals in the camouflage? I'm looking for white on white. Am I getting close? Oh, I found it. There it is. I hope you can you I hope you can see it on the screen. I wonder what animal is gonna come first to try to stay warm in that mitten. Let's look at the little mitten pictures on the side. Mouse is looking. Whoa, yeah. He sees it. What is it? It's a mole. Let's find out. Let's turn the page, mouse. Okay, there we go. Woo! A mole tired from tunneling along discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size. So Mole decided to stay. Oh my goodness, can you find a little picture of the mole? He was tunneling, there's the tunnel. Do, 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 do. There's the mitten and there's a little mole going inside. Oh my goodness. I wonder what animal is gonna to try to get inside the mitten next. I don't know, let's find out. Oh, here's the clue inside the mitten picture. That looks to me like a snowshoe hair. <laughs> Help me turn the page, mouse. Okay, there we go. Whoa! A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat and it was then that he saw the mitten. <laughs> oh, and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, his big feet, <laughs> he moved over. So let's take a look, little mouse. Whoa, there's the snowshoe rabbit. And it's got pretty white fur, just like the snow. And look at those rabbit tracks right by the mitten. So there's a mole, and there's a rabbit, and they're squeezing into that mitten. <laughs> oh my goodness. Two animals. Two animals are in that mitten now. I wonder who's coming next. Oh, check it out. That looks to me like a mole. Yeah, it's a mole. Oh no. A mole, a rabbit. <laughs> and let's find out who it is. Okay, next, it's a hedgehog. A, he a hedgehog came snuffling along, <laughs> having spent the day looking under leaves and wet leaves, all those wet leaves under the snow, for things to eat. He decided to move into the mitten and warm himself up. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and just, oh no, but not being ones to argue with someone that was covered with prickles, they made room. Oh my goodness. You know, hedgehogs are a lot like porcupines. They have bumps and prickles on their body to help them so that nobody will want to get next to them and nobody will want to eat them because they're so sharp. But look at that picture. Oh no, so now we have hedgehog in that mitten too. Whoa, let's see. He's got prickles on his skin. I see them. Uh, and he's gonna prickle the rabbit. And oh, look, right, right there. Do you guys see that? <laughs> the mole nose sticking out. Hedgehog. <laughs> rabbit and mole. Oh, that mitten stretched. Ah, and all three of them fit inside. Three. <laughs> wow. Hedgehog with prickles. Oh my goodness. Oh, who's next? Hedgehog wants to know. Hedgehog sees over here in the mitten. Oh, an owl. No way. There's no way an owl is going to fit in here. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out what happens. Help me. There we go. <gasps> it is an owl. Oh, man. As soon as Hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, 
a big owl attracted by the commotion swooped down. And when he decided, he decided to move in also. The mole and the rabbit, ah, and the hedgehog grumbled. <laughs> and they saw the owl's glinty talons and they quickly let him in. Ooh, talons. What are talons? Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, talons, talons, talons. That must be those sharp claw looking things. Yeah, talons. Oh my goodness. What? The mitten stretched again. Look at, I see the prickles from the hedgehog sticking out of the mitten. I see mole's nose. I see hedgehog's nose. I see rabbit's big ears. Ah, oh, everybody in the mitten. Oh my goodness. And now owl too. How's he going to do it? Look out for those talons. Oh, okay, the mitten stretched. So now there's four animals in that mitten. Who's next? Who's this over here? I see a nose. I see another nose coming. I wonder who it is. Oh. Up through the snow appeared a badger. A badger? Oh my goodness, a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog, and the owl. Do you think they were happy? No, they were not pleased. Oh dear. There was no room left in that mitten. But when they saw the diggers or the feet on the badger, because badgers dig a lot, they gave him they gave him the thumb of the mitten. What a whole badger fitting into the thumb of the mitten? Wow, I don't see how that's possible. What? I don't know. Well, who's coming next? So they're all in there. I see an owl, I see owl eyes, I see, I see rabbit ears, I see mole noses, I see hedgehog prickles, and badgers supposed to be inside that thumb. Oh, whew. but, oh no, another animal is coming. Who is it? Fox. It looks like a fox to me. Let's find out. Okay, here we go. Oh, it is a fox. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten, and a waft of warm steam rose into the air, and a fox trotting by stopped in to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten with that white, fluffy wool made him feel drowsy, and Fox poked his muzzle, poked his nose in there, and <laughs> He poked himself into that mitten when the mole and the rabbit and the hedgehog and the owl and the badger saw his shiny teeth. What? They gave him, that good old fox, lots of room. And it looks like the mitten stretched, stretched again. Oh my goodness. They haven't run out of room yet. That's amazing. So, oh, look over here, who's going, oh, no, that looks like a bear. A bear, let's find out, turn the page mouse. Oh no, there it is, it is a bear. A great bear lumbered by, he spied the mitten all plumped up and not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way into the mitten. Look at that nose. He's sticking his nose in the mitten. Ah, oh no. Oh, the animals were packed in as tightly as could be, but that, but what animal would argue with the bear? Mouse, would you argue with the bear? Uh -uh. Oh no. The mitten swelled and stretched and was pulled and bulged into many times the size, but Baba's good knitting, knitting held fast. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm looking at the picture in the mitten on the side, and I see someone who looks like mouse. 
let's find out. Moss, I thought you were in this story too, so let's find out what you do. Okay, along that bear, look at that bear's head in that mitten, and look at how big that mitten stretched. What? Oh. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. Tiny, yeah. She wiggled into one space that was left inside that mitten and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Can you see that in the picture? There you are, mouse. Look at that. Whoa, it's on bear's nose. That could mean some trouble. Oh, and look. Nikki just realized he lost his mitten. He doesn't look very happy. Let's find out what happens next. Okay. Oh, <laughs> the bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, oh, yes, I have very tickly whiskers. <laughs> whiskers gave an enormous sneeze. Oh, 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 <laughs> Look at all the animals flying around. Oh, let's see if we can find them all. That big sneeze. <laughs> the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered all the animals in all directions. <gasps> oh my goodness, there's the badger. <laughs> what? There's the owl. There's the fox. Oh wait, that's not the owl. That's somebody's tail. That is the rabbit. There's the owl. There's the fox upside down. And there's the little mouse. Oh! And did we miss anybody? Oh, there's hedgehog on the bear's foot. <gasps> They're all flying. And the mitten flew up in the air. Let's see if it gets lost or if it gets found. Oh, there it is. It's flying in the air. Oh, and look, the animals landed in the snowbank over here. Oh my goodness. On his way home, Nikki saw the white shape in the distance. Oh, it was his lost mitten silhouetted across the sky, against the sky. Okay, so the sky was blue and the mitten was white, so it wasn't camouflaged anymore. You can see it. Yeah, oh, and look at more animals in the snow. Oh no. <laughs> so he's looking, he found his mitten. He's kind of looks a little happier, I think, and he's running towards his mitten. There he goes. Oh, yeah, he's going to catch it. Catch it. Catch it, Nikki. Come on, catch your mitten. Okay. <laughs> and he's going to go home. Oh, and the animals, they're going back to their actual homes. I see the fox going to his den. I see the owl flying away. Whoa. And as Nikki ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window of the cabin. First, she looked to see if he was safe, safe and sound. And then she saw that he still had both his mittens. Whew, that's good. Oh, there she is. That is a picture. Take a look at that one up close. She's got both the mittens in her hand. But look how big that one stretched. Whoa, one mitten is so much bigger than the other one. <laughs> how did that happen? We know everybody tried to go inside that mitten. Even me, the mouse. <laughs> and that's the end of our story. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that story today. And we are going to move the camera temporarily back to so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to put Bear down. Bear, I can't believe you got inside that mitten. And Badger, I can't believe you went inside that mitten. And Hedgehog, I thought your prickles were going to wreck the mitten and rip it up, but it didn't. And Rabbit, 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 with those ears sticking out of the mitten. And Owl, ooh, I can't believe that you didn't try to eat the mouse and the rabbit when you were in that mitten. And Mr. Fox, yeah, some of those animals are on your menu list for food too. All you guys were in that mitten. Little mole. And last of all, little mouse. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a plaque with our hand. We are going to put together um, 
We're going to roll out some, I call it salt dough, and we're going to make a handprint in it. So it looks like a mitten, and then we're going to put our picture inside. So let me show you how we're going to do this. You're going to need some supplies to make craft along with me. And I have a cup of flour. I have a cup of salt. I have a half a cup of water. And I have a spoon in a bowl, an extra cup just in case I need it. And then I have a soup can that's gonna be kind of like a rolling pin. I'm gonna roll my dough flat. Anytime you need to roll Play-Doh flat or some dough that you make flat, you can always use a can instead of a rolling pin. Then I have a couple of cookie cutters for shapes and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those in a little bit. So, um, oh, I also have a protector for my table in case I get salt dough all over the place. And I'm gonna put my camera to it here on the table um, so that you can see that in a minute. So first of all, mix our dough. I'm gonna put in the flour. <laughs> and I'm going to put in the cup of salt. And before I put the water in, I'm going to take my spoon and stir it together until you can't, until the salt and the flour kind of mixes in with each other so you don't have big pockets of salt or big pockets of flour together. Okay, I got stirred up pretty good. So now it's time to put in the water, about a half a cup, and it might get a little hard to stir. So, need some help from an adult, that's okay. So stir, 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 and it's gonna make some dough, some salt dough. Now salt dough will get hard, and salt dough, will dry out and so whatever we make today we can keep for a long time and it's gonna be kind of like a mitten picture frame okay i'm getting there look at that whoa ah, i haven't stirred it up quite enough so i'm gonna put it down, down on the table so i can get it so what happens is sometimes it'll get so thick that you can't stir with a spoon so you want to get your hands mixed in there maybe so i hope you guys are able to do this along with me and yeah clean it off okay so i almost got it not quite i still see some salt at the bottom of my bowl stir 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 oh my goodness this is like a workout. My arms are getting tired, right? All right, so now I, oh, I still have a bunch of salt to get in there and I wanna make sure that I get it all in because then it'll be the best dough ever. Okay. All right, so now I do, I have all the salt and flour mixed in and it looks kind of squishy, but let's make it into a ball next, okay. That's the fun part. This, this is why I like to play with Play-Doh and other dough and make cookies because you can take and squish it together and make shapes. And that's what we're gonna do. So I, I got a ball. I gotta make this into a ball. Oh, maybe I have more than I need. I didn't do this ahead of time, but that's okay. Okay, so <laughs> I have a big ball of salt though. And I'm gonna put it down here on my, on my table protector and squish it together in kind of like a circle. And so now I am going to scrape a little bit of the salt off my hands and turn it to the tabletop camera so you can see what we're gonna do next. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so there's my ball. My ball of salt dough and I'm, kind of forming it into something that looks a little round. And now I'm gonna press it down with my hands as much as I can, like so. But now I can't press it down anymore. So I'm gonna get out my can 
and roll it down. Okay, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And we're gonna make this look like a mitten in a minute. It's gonna be a mitten picture frame. So I'm rolling it with my can of soup and it's smooshing it. Now you don't wanna roll it out too thin or it'll break later. So mine is about a quarter inch thick. And that's about, maybe let's see if I can do that with my hand so you can see. It's about that thick. See where my hand, my thumb and my fingers are? It's about that thick. So it's pretty thick. I hope you guys are rolling. <laughs> okay. And I gotta make it a little bit even. There. <laughs> Oops, it's off screen. Let's pull it down. Okay. So next, this is fun. Take my hand and hold it in the shape of a mitten. You can, you can do, you know, I have gloves with fingers, but I also have mittens like this. So I'm gonna press my hand to make it look like a mitten into my dough. Oh, smush, smush, smush. And then pick it up. There, can you see? I hope you can see the handprint that I made. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my spoon and cut away some of the shape around my hand. See how I'm doing that? I'm just cutting that around and I just had the edge of my spoon in there and down my fingers and over my thumb and around to the end. And is that looking like a mitten? I hope so. I'm gonna pull away the scraps. I can play with the scraps later. Yay, I have another ball of salt <laughs> that I can play with. But doesn't that look like a mitten? Yeah, it does, it's really awesome. So I'm gonna kind of smooth it out on the edges. And so now, eventually when this dries out, I'm gonna put a pick and then I could give it to my mom or my dad as a present or it could be my dog or anything I want. And so I have some cookie cutters. I have a heart and I have a star and I can't decide which one I wanna use, but I think maybe I'll use the heart because that's got the biggest space for me to put a picture in. Now watch, I'm gonna stick that right in the middle of my mitten. And maybe this is a great gift for Valentine's Day because it could say, I love you. And I'm cutting out a heart right in the middle Oh, now how to get that heart out of there without wrecking the rest of it. I'm going to use the end of my spoon and pick it up. Ta-da! <laughs> so that's when this dries out. You can keep it on your page protector. You can put it on a little plate. This whole thing right now you could pick up if you wanted. And so to dry it, oh, it's stretching out. So I'm going to leave it on my table protector but you could very carefully pick it up and stick it over onto your plate. Yeah, and let it dry out for a couple days. You could even paint it or whatever and then stick a picture of you, <laughs> glue it on the backside and then your picture frame will look just like a mitten. So there we go. Or if you wanna just play with some more salt dough, you can make some more salt dough cookies there whoops let's put that over here salt dough cookies salt dough cookies i think i'll make a star but dough is really fun to play with that's why i make cookies all the time because oh, i like to play with the dough <laughs> there we go all right so i'm coming back to the facetime camera to say goodbye there we go. All right. So I hope you had some fun listening to this story and making a salt dough mitten and playing my camouflage games. <laughs> and I just want to wave goodbye with my favorite Michigan mitten. Thanks for coming today. Bye. seen before. And here's where you get to make a choice. Was it? Ah!
a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I'm just gonna stick some pine cones in my box, and um, then the fun starts. I just start rolling them around. The air rushing out of the balloon is gonna push that balloon up. So let's see what happens. All right, one, two, three. Oh, wow. So that's how rockets kind of work. We are going to build two different kinds of rockets today. Four kind of 